tumors. Yeah, it's a tumor. It's not a tumor. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about non-malignant tumors. And kind of just to give yourself a, um, a cursory understanding of this, uh, very rudimentary understanding of this in light of, and also I'm going to show you some really cool research that was just done. Let me bring that up first. This is very, very interesting. Uh, Linus Pauling, all right, I'm going to share my screen here if I can. I did some really good work years ago uh, concerning uh, the therapeutic use of vitamin C and what it could do with cancer. Well, this study was just published. A landmark study resolves the Linus Pauling and Arthur Robinson vitamin C and cancer controversy. Both men were right. So Pauling was saying, you know, the, and the, the controversy here was over what dose of vitamin C to use, which was going to give you a therapeutic bang for your buck. Now, remember, in the past, I've spoken about the Goldilocks zone, right, and how I think that it's important to hit the Goldilocks zone with our nutrients and our antioxidants. And instead of just giving massive doses of everything all the time, right, the problem is that we don't really know what the Goldilocks zone is because the medical marketplace is monopolized by the pharmaceutical industry and they don't give a crap about generating a cure. And if you think they do, you've got your head under a gigantic rock. You need to pull it out. You know, the facts, ma'am, just the facts. You're welcome to your own opinion. But you most certainly are not welcome to your own, st your own facts. So, if you think that the pharmaceutical industry has your back... Ah, you have another thing coming, my friend. Let me give you the nuts and bolts of this, okay? Uh, last June, the University of Salford in the United Kingdom published two studies that found vitamin C and antibiotics could be up to 100 times more effective at killing cancer cells than chemotherapy. Ah. Ha! Giving the antibiotic doxycycline followed by vitamin C effectively starves cancer cells of their fuel, resulting in their death. Then last August, another research group in the UK and the USA published their findings that IV injections of vitamin C could help fight blood cancers, right? That by injecting vitamin C, cancer growth could be prevented. Researchers halted the progression of leukemia in mice by promoting the function of a specific gene through high doses of vitamin C. So they were upregulating gene function through vitamin C. Very, very interesting. Um, so one more thing that I want to tell you here is that the Vitamin C Foundation predicts on the basis of this study that all cancer patients will be advised to supplement with vitamin C in oral amounts that can achieve at least 100 micromoles per liter concentration in their blood for as long as possible. That's a lot. Um, our initial estimates are that one gram or less of vitamin C creates the concentration that increases cancer. So if you don't give enough vitamin C, you're actually going to promote cancer cell growth. You got to hit the Goldilocks zone, right? And that comes out to about four grams at a time with 80 grams being an effective dose. Now, this is hospital administered doses of vitamin C. This isn't just go to the, you know, health food store, get a big bottle of vitamin C and be pounding it down. You couldn't take that much orally. You, you'd be having diarrhea and all kinds of upset. So this is, you know, therapeutic intravenous medical doctor use of vitamin C. But nonetheless, it substantiates what we've been saying for a long time, that the human body is a complex system of interrelated parts, and the human body knows how to fix itself, the human body wants to fix itself, and so rather than delivering drugs, man-made synthetic drugs or surgical procedures, the intention of which are to exert hostile takeovers of the biochemistry of the body, right? force the body in a particular particular position, kill the tumor, kill the tumor, and kill the patient. 
it would be better to give the body support so that it can kill it itself. It can get rid of it itself because it was the body that grew it in the first place. So slowly the ship is turning, but you know, how long is that going to take? Much shorter if I was appointed Surgeon General.